Roxy, written and illustrated by Loris Lisensky. Roxy. Roxanne was a lovely child. but as clumsy as an ox. And every time she played, she got a dozen nicks and knocks. Ouch! Ouch! Is what they heard her say a hundred times a day. Ouch! And ow! And oops! Out loud whenever she would play. On one day in particular, she tripped and hit the dirt and bellowed out, I'm really, really sick of Ouch. getting hurt. At last, she didn't notice. She'd stumbled right across the edges of the playground, almost hidden in the moss. The rule about the magic wood was always stay away. Her best friend, Huli, said with dread, be careful what you say. Alas, again, she didn't hear, but let out such a moan. I wish, she cried, I really wish that I were made of stone. The children were apprehensive. This surely bode no good. You never made a wish too near the dark and magic wood. The spirit of the forest called ka plickety zickety zock and at those words the girl began to change to solid rock she tried to rise on bolder feet but toppled to the ground then rolled and bowled and tumbled turning upside down around banging crashing bashing what an overwhelming fall but all she did was find it fun. It didn't hurt at all. She clapped her hands and made the sound of rocks about to crack and did it again and again and again as the children hauled her back. How strange to have rock elbows. How odd to have rock knees. Maybe now she get to play exactly as she pleased. Did she dare to try it? She took a reckless plunge. Crashing to the ground was just like landing on a sponge. <laughs> Never getting hurt again in any slip or fall. Roxy, as they called her, could try anything at all. She plopped into the river, no danger if she sank. She helped the other children make their way from bank to bank. She was brave enough now to do wheelies, but her bike refused to go. She wanted to try swinging way up high but the swings today were slow. Then she noticed even though she never got a scratch, still she tripped and fell a lot and still she couldn't catch. The kids stopped playing statues when Roxy always won. Then they stopped including her in any of the fun. They sort of didn't seem to see a person made of stone. Everything felt awful as she stiffly plodded home. Even her mother ignored her, except for a glance or two. Your hair is very gritty, dear. We'll try a new shampoo. The bread and jam for supper tasted just like dust 
with tongue of stone and teeth of rock, she pulverized the crust. No more could she see in color. No more could she touch at all. She gave her cat a stony pat and scared him up the wall. By morning, she was stonier. Rock from toes to ears. She tried to cry, but from her eyes came only pebbly tears. Help, came out a whisper. Stony lips hardly talk. So again, and again, and again, she clapped together hands of rock. Hooli heard the clacking and hastened through the door. Roxy gasped. The magic wood, I must return once more. It's very hard to hurry when you're heavy as a boulder. Hooli called the others. Together, they all rolled her. Quivering with fear, the children lowered Roxy down. Once inside the magic wood, she grimly looked around. It wasn't a wish on purpose. It wasn't the wish I meant. I don't want to get so hurt, and yet I don't want to be cement. Branches, nettles, shadows, and a sparkling light entwined. The spirit of the forest. Roxy almost changed her mind. But no, she said. I'd like my wish adjusted if you can. I needed to learn not to fall, that's all, and bravely explained her plan. The forest spirit said, I've never changed a wish before. You are the very first to ask. You better tell me more. Roxy did. The spirit said, I'll try your new approach. And Roxy got her very own enchanted playground coach. They started that very morning. Balance was lesson one. The other kids giggled at first, but copied the way it was done. She was taught some fancy footwork. She learned some nifty flips. They practice hopping and starting and stopping without any crashes or slips. So Roxy came to be nimble and Roxy came to be quick. After the spirit returned to the wood, she practiced every trick. She loved not getting bruises. She loved not getting a scratch. But most of all, she loved watching a ball come faster and faster and closer and closer now that she knew how to catch. The end.